We're going to get to the cash box and the, the head now. We've made a continuous bill path because we have actually done away with the transport on that. So we're going directly from the head into the cash can. You'll also notice that on the cash can and the head, we have ridges that are running across. And as you put that on there, they made in there perfectly. And they can't go any other way. You can't misalign it. Nice thing about that. So you don't have any jams. Oh, these guys down here. Yep. Can you see that well? These guys here. Yep. It, it'll actually line up on that cash can, and you, you can't misalign it. So we have zero jams. We don't have to worry about it coming in cocked or anything like that. We're going to, did I say another funny? Okay, we're going to get into the cash box now, inside the cash box. And in, where's your flashlight? Hey, you. Okay. Now, inside the cash box, you'll find no belts. It's all gear driven. And if you have problems with the stacker with inside here, there's two screws located right in the top there. Two screws take that out. This comes out as a complete unit. And replaces as a complete unit. Two screws, pull it out, put another one in. We don't have to worry about gummy belts. We don't have to worry about slippage. Well, when we get done, I, you know, I'd like all you guys to come up if you'd like. Just start playing around with the stuff. It's the only way to learn it if you haven't already had a chance to get on it. We ha oh, money. Woohoo. Okay, there's eight pinch points located between your head and your cash box, so we never lose contact with the bill. That's how we can guarantee zero jams, because we never lose contact with it. You'll know that when you go through a regular head, you've got to take it back through the transport, and then it goes down into the head. And there's points there where you're going to lose contact with that bill. With this being direct drive, front stacking, we don't lose contact with it at all. Now. When you go to replace this, once again, I said it replaces as a module. Two screws, pull it out, stick another one in, two screws, you're done. The cost on the cash can? No, I, I don't know what the exact prices are on, on the parts themselves. I work in the back just fixing. I have no idea what they cost. Now. We've talked a couple of times already about the short bill path. We stack in the front. That's what makes our short bill path work. So when we go ahead and slap that bad boy in there, we'll let it power up. Hey, there's that $100 bill. So when we go to put it in, it's a lot quicker going in and stacking. We've, we've already talked a couple times about the dispute resolution window. I'm not going to beat that dead horse anymore. Uh, I've, we also spoke about the transaction speed being about three seconds to stack and, also, and to give your customer their credits. Here we go, our cash box, our drop crew resistant cash box. It's made of a high strength plastic. I, I was fortunate enough to actually go down to Mexico to the manufacturing plant and see how they made this. And it's just a, it's a two piece and it's welded together. They have almost like a solder stick, pliable. They stick it in there. It goes into a microwave 
and they just fuse it together. It doesn't break apart. So you're not going to be able to split that thing apart to get into the gears. That's why you replace it as a complete module. Two screws out, pull the whole transport out of there. Now, they say that this has been dropped from a, a height of 20 feet, and it's still inserted 20,000 bills without a jam. Very durable. Go ahead. Yes. I haven't had any gears broken yet. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the question was, when we replace the, uh, the stacker on the inside, is it because the gears break? I don't know that any have come in with broken gears. I have yet, as a matter of fact, I have yet to see one come in that we had to replace the inside on. Right, exactly. Exactly. There are gears in the front half, and we're actually going to touch base on that in a second, but now that you brought it up, we'll touch base on it now. The, the gears are recessed on the front here. So there's no chance of, of the drop crew going to slam the can in and catching that gear and breaking a tooth. And then you, then you run up with all of these jams. All recessed. <laughs> exactly, yeah. The only, about the only way that'll happen is if somebody actually goes through and deliberately tries to damage it. Other than that, you're not going to have any problems. Now, with the cash box, we have right angle prisms in there, which help us to be able to read it better. And the cash box, we have uh, the ability for player tracking to put a cash box switch in the back. We actually have a mounting spot in the back. You can't see it on this one because it's on a test stand. But on the regular chassis, there's a mounting uh, place on the back so that you could put a cherry switch in for your player tracking uh, so that it, you know, they can keep track of when, when the drops are occurring. Everybody looks good there? There we go. We just got to our recessed plastic gears on the cash box. We're ahead of our game a little bit, but hey, what can you say? I don't think we have to talk about that again, do we? Very good. The cash can here has dual locking capability, which most of them do. Now, only certain jurisdictions mandate that you need to do that. New Jersey is one of them. New Jersey is big on, we want double everything. They want lo double locks on the cash can, double locks on the processor board. Everything with them is double. Apparently, they don't trust their people very much. But you do have the capability of putting dual locks onto this one. And it's all a jurisdictional requirement. Now, these are also common acceptor modules, which means the head itself can be interchanged into different games. The only thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to change the firmware that goes into it. Firmware change, very simple. We're going to go into that with the PPM, our portable programming module. I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you guys how that's done. Now, the one thing that you have to remember is with this unit, we have really three, four components. We have the head, we have the cash can, we have our interface card. This is our interface card. This little baby, I don't know if you can see that or not. Of course. It holds the functionality and basically tells the unit what it's in, whether it's in an IGT Netflix game or if it's in a ballet game or if it's in a Williams game. This is what it's going to tell you. There's two ways that you can tell the difference between an RS-232 interface board. <laughs> Sorry, David. You're killing me. <laughs> now, there's, there's two different types of boards that'll go, go in there. We have a Netplex board and an RS-232 board. The way you can tell the difference on the two is there is a micro switch located on the bottom of that board. 
if you have an IGT interface card, you're going to see a single micro switch. If you have an RS-232, you're going to see a double micro switch. You can't interchange those. You have to keep the RS-232 with the RS-232 game and the Netplex with the IGTs. Yes, we have had switches break off. We have had some break off. When they break off, send them on into us. We can throw new ones on there. The other nice thing about these interface cards is the way that they're made. They're made PC style with PC connectors. They've made this so inexpensive that this actually is starting to turn into a throwaway item. If it goes bad, you can actually toss it, and it's not going to cost you that much to actually purchase another one. Well, at this point, we don't want you guys to repair them in-house yet because they're still under warranty. I mean, we, we want you guys... After the fact. After the fact, yes. I'm sure there, that you'll be able to obtain the components from us or we'll be able to get you uh, an outsource to where you can get the components for it. And that is a correct statement. Any questions on the interface card at this point? Hot, the card you really don't want to hot swap. You want to have normally have power down when you're doing that. So what we'll do is we'll power down, we'll pull it out. Your head you can, by all means, hot swap. That is not a problem. And that's one of the things that MEI looked at as one of the considerations because there is so much hot swapping going on. And due to that, we've had so many boards that have gone down. Control boards have dropped. Yeah, you want your can. Do we have any questions on being able to swap the heads? Sure, go ahead. That's correct. Now, the question was with like the WBAs, they go, they'll go through and calibrate it, and then they'll put it on the shelf, and there is a short lifespan as far as that calibration being correct. Right. With the cash flow, you'll have no problems with that because the, the sensors are actually going through and they're reading everything and they're, ca they're self calibrating themselves. And Yes, you can definitely be guaranteed. And if not, I want to hear about it. Like I said, we haven't gotten a whole lot of input from the customers yet as to what they're finding wrong with, the, with this system or even you know, what they're finding right with it. And what we're really looking for is a lot of that input so that we can get together with MEI and get all of these issues straightened out so that you guys don't have to deal with this stuff. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, the question was, or it actually it was more of a statement that when the cash box gets full, it actually, the cash box kicks itself out of its seating. And that is one of the things that MEI did so that it actually helps you guys out. So when you come up to a unit and you open it up and you're going to see a yellow LED, a yellow LED is going to tell you that you have some sort of an issue with your cash can. It, 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 a red should tell you that it's a hard tilt, so that if I pull this out some, I have a yellow LED. If you have a red LED, you have a hardware fault. You're actually going to have to replace something. With a yellow LED, it's telling you that you have something that you can fix on the floor right then and there. And in a lot of cases, it is going to be that your cash can is pushed out. And the reason that it's pushed out is because we don't have any real latches on there. What we have is, and we'll, we'll get to this in a few minutes, but we have some recessed springs on the side that actually will hold it into place. And on the outside of the cash can, we have a couple of wings, one on each side. I don't know, there, there's, a better, there's a better shot of it, right there. Okay? And that's what's holding it into place. So when the cash can gets full, and there's so much pressure being exerted by the stacker to get this bill stacked, it's actually going to push itself out of seating. So when you come up to a unit 
and you're seeing a yellow light and you notice that the cash can's out and you push it back in and everything comes up and you get your green light coming up real nice and you close the door and you go away and you come back 10, 15 minutes later with that same yellow light, you can, you can pretty much be assured that you're going to need to change out the cash can on that one because you've got a full can. Yeah, go ahead. No, the head will not take a bill. No, because you are actually in a soft tilt at that point, so it's locking up. Exactly. And the question was, if the cash can's been pushed out, uh, will it still accept bills? And no, it won't. No, yeah, exactly. And it, because we're in a soft tilt, it's not going to allow it to happen. How do you determine? You can actually, we're going to, oh yeah, uh, how do you determine what boot code is actually loaded onto the interface card for your unit? We have a program called STS, and in that program, no, we don't have a CD for that one, but, in, and I'm going to show you guys this, once we get done with this presentation, now I'm going to go into the STS program, and it'll actually go in there, you can go in and set configurations for your unit, such as enabling and disabling certain DNOMs or if you want to check your boot code or change your boot code or actually change the firmware that you're going to load into your head. Should we have this at our, at our property? It would be, if you're running cash flow, and the question was, should you have this at your property? If you're running cash flow, I would definitely strongly suggest it because it's going to do nothing but help you. If you have a problem, you can just take it down to the shop, throw it onto your test bed, and it's going to tell you what's going on. You can, get, you, can, you can get the STS program through Advanced Electro Electronics. All you got to do is give us a call. We'll get you all set up with it. STS. It's called the STS program. And once we finish here, we're actually going to go into that STS program and uh, show you guys how it works. Excuse me. Any other questions so far? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> That's just in case. <laughs> That's very true. Okay, we talked about our interface card a little bit. I want to go into it a little bit more. Once again, our interface card is set up with PC-style edge connectors which makes it very easy in and out. You'll notice that I didn't have to unscrew anything to get this card out. All I had to do is give it a little tug, pop it out of its seat, and it comes out. One thing is when you put that in with the cash box in, you can break that. You get a little sheet of paper or something in there. Exactly. And, right and the statement was that when you go to put these in, when you do have the cash box already in there, what you want to do is maybe slide a piece of paper in, with it so that you make sure that it doesn't catch on anything and, and tear this micro switch off. That's a really good idea. Do you reckon that's the number one cause of the switch being damaged? Oh yeah, I mean, most definitely. Don't, it's, put, don't break out holes every time if you don't put them anywhere. Exactly. And if the cash box was not locked, of course, you would just remove it, yeah. stick the card in it, put the cash box back. Yeah. But that requires an act of God to get all the pure cash. Yeah, it's, see, it's very simple for me to do it here like this because I don't have to worry about getting a, you know, security over to do it. Now, we're also talking about computer technology versus the plug with pins, you know, your Molex connectors and all. So this is what makes it so inexpensive. We don't have to worry about that stuff. And it, easy in and out. It's, it slides into the chassis and mounts very quickly. Slide it in, push it in. It's done. Uh, we'll put it all back together. Okay, we're going to talk now about the acceptor release latch. And there's real, there is only one latch on this unit, located right in the front, one bar across the front here. Easy, one hand will take it out, one hand will put it in. There's really not much to say about that. <laughs> I don't even know why they put it in there. Now, if you have 
reason or if you have the occasion where you do have a jammed bill. The only place you're going to really have the jam is right up in the head. So if you actually have to access that, what you're going to do is you're going to take your unit off. There's a yellow cover on the top of this, and it actually moves forward and backward. If you take it and pull it towards you, you can open up to your bill path. Very easy to open it up and to get to it. Another nice thing about this is they've actually angled the bill path. It'll come down on a slight angle and then go across so that you don't have any floor people that love to get their screwdriver out and dig in there to grab that bill and try and pull it out. They cannot scratch the lenses. The other nice... Yellow is kind of a new standard. If it's something you grab and move, it's yellow. Or if it's yellow, it's something you can grab and move. Yeah. I would suggest that you do. We can try doing it and see what it does. Nope, you can't do it because of the chassis. And I, actually, I've never even tried to do that. So yes, you do have to take the head out of the chassis in order to get to the bill path. Oh, we don't want to do that. Well, that, that's, why you guys, that's why you guys are here, so you can tell them not to do that stuff. <laughs> okay, what we want to talk about now a little bit is actually the bill entry guides. Now, this is just your standard IGT bill entry guide, but if you have a lit entry guide, uh, like a platform bezel, where you actually got the little runway lights going on. The way we've got this set up on here is you can plug that connector right into the head. The head is going to give you the power for your bezel. You don't have to worry about any harnessing coming from any place else. It'll plug right in. Now, once again, I showed you guys a little bit earlier. All of our bezels are snap-on, snap-off. No screws. Nice. Don't have to worry about anybody stripping the screw head and then having problems getting it off. You just come over and pop it off. Well, yeah, if you're, using, if you're using a platform bezel, yes, you want to make sure that you unplug it first. Otherwise, you're going to start ripping wires. What I'd like to talk to you about now is our configuration button. We have what's called a configuration button located on the front. It's this little yellow button right there. Now, what we can do with that is we can actually go through and configure what bills we want enabled and what bills we want disabled. Now, I believe on page 20 of your manual, page 18, I'm sorry, on page 18, you're going to find a coupon. Now, this is the actual size of the coupon that you're going to use when you put it in there. So what you can do is you can go ahead and cut that coupon out, make copies of it. You know, cut it out as a full sheet, run, make a bunch of copies, and then all you have to do is cut it down to its size. And with that, what you'll do is you'll use a number two pencil. Number two. No ink. It doesn't like ink. It likes pencil. And you can go in, and all you have to do is fill in, just like you were in school when you were taking your tests. Fill in the circle completely. Stay inside the lines. <laughs> and just whether you want it turned on or turned off, that's all you have to do. Now, you'll also notice you have the ability to enable or disable the vouchers, your tickets. And you're also going to see another one here, auxiliary. That's used for a secondary communication, which you guys normally will not use. So in most cases, you're going to have that as off. And then normally, you guys are going to want to go four-way acceptance so that you can put your billing upside down, right side up, left side face, right side face. So what you're going to do when you get to that point is you're going to push the button, and you're going to see two LEDs come up and start flashing. When they start flashing, you're going to insert your coupon. And when you're doing this, you want to insert it face up. OK? Now, I know that you've got it set up for four-way, but you're still initializing it. So you want to send it in face up. Now, if it goes through and accepts it, you'll get a green flash. 
and it'll come back out and it's all good. If it doesn't, I believe it's a yellow flash that you're going to get. Oh, if it's rejected, you're going to get a, a red flash. And then you're going to have to go through and make sure that you've got everything set up, make sure you've got everything filled in correctly, and you're using lead instead of ink. And that's how you can go through and set up for whether or not you want your $1 bills, $2 bills, $5 bills turned on or off, depending on jurisdictions. Now, like Connecticut, they won't take anything under a $10 bill. Don't know why, but that's just the way it is. Yeah, that's all that is. Okay, now we're going to talk about our diagnostic LEDs. And actually, you're going to see a representation of this on page 20. But it's a really bad representation. It's really blurry. You can't really see it all that well. That's why I wanted to give each and every one of you the actual card. So that way you can go through and read it. Now, it makes... It makes for easy troubleshooting because all you have to do is look at the status of the LEDs and, and correlate that to what you see on your card. And once again, a red condition is a hard fault. That means you have some sort of a hardware failure and you're going to have to replace something on it. Uh, whether it be uh, the interface card is crapped out on you or your cash box is bad, you're going to see a red, you're going to see a red fault. Your yellow light, once again, is going to be more of a soft fault, and that's more or less if you have uh, an issue with the cash can. Let's say you've got a full cash can, and it kicks it out of its seat. That's where you're going to see that. Green lights are good, obviously. You see green lights, you want that. Now, if you, see, if you install this and you see a green flashing light, what that's going to tell you is you don't have communication with the host. You're not talking to your game. So then you're actually going to have to go through and figure out and make sure that everything is configured properly in the game and on the unit. Now, on this unit, I'm set in a standalone mode, and we'll go over that in the STS program shortly and show you that you can actually, for bench test purposes, you can set a unit up as a standalone and make sure that it accepts its bills, and you can check your audit on that. Now, they talk about the handle on the cash box. It's a plastic, flexible handle. It's color-coded so that if you have uh, drop crews that go with a certain color with a certain section, you can actually do it that way. Or if they're doing it for a certain day, it's very easy to change out. You got Just hand off, arrow. Just hand off. <laughs> yeah. It's got four screws. Take the four screws out, it'll replace. Very simple. Now, the cash box latches, that's what we were talking about earlier. We have passive latches that are located on the side right there. It's on both sides, and all, it's just spring-loaded. So that when you go to pull your cash can out, Let's do that again. Uh, I don't know that you saw that that well. But th that's what's holding in your cash can. We don't have the latch on the front. Now, you guys know that have ZT uh, units in your, in your games on your floor. You have that latch in the front that you actually have to pop down to pull out. Passive latches makes it really nice. Also, it helps out with, uh... no, that's not what I wanted to say. 